What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I have a new bike sitting in front of me. This is the Walkie H7. This is a step through e-bike with two motors on it. So it's the all wheel drive version. It comes in a 40 amp hour or a 60 amp hour and also comes with a single motor depending on what you want. This spec out one right here is coming in at $2,099. 48 volt e-bike, 60 amp hour battery on this bad boy. And let's go over some more specs and see if this thing is actually worth the money by the end of this video. And if you do like this bike, I will have links to discount codes, everything down below. First and foremost, before we fully get into this video review, I want to be transparent and let you guys know that the bike did come damaged. FedEx was very rude and when they delivered this thing, they delivered it upside down. And I noticed when I took it out of the box, everything was pushed in. You guys can see the pictures on the screen. The wheel got damaged, the derailleur got bent. So the chain does come off on this bike if I do shift gears. So we're probably not going to be using the gear system. The cool thing is the company did hit me up and they said, hey, we can ship you anything you need to replace it since the bike did come damaged so don't worry if you get your bike and it's damaged they will definitely take care of you but without further ado let's get into it now we do get a front motor this is a thousand watt motor Woo! and it peaks at 1600 watts oh my god yeah we're not doing that no more and you get a rear hub motor that's also a thousand watts and also peaks at 1600 watts now i think we can all agree that the main reason you're going to buy this bike is obviously dual motors of course step through design makes it easier for people to get on which i'll get on this thing in a second it's really going to be this battery for 60 amp hours people want range and they don't want to worry about only being able to go 20 miles or so and this thing is definitely going to give you a lot of range but there's a process to get to this battery if you need to take it off the bike for whatever reason now you can perfectly charge it with it on the bike and that's what i would recommend but if you're going to load this up on say like a bike rack or you got to carry it up some stairs you might want to take the battery out because that weighs 30 pounds and to do it you do have to do the quick release for the seat post then the key always stays into the on position when you're using the bike and then when you do get somewhere you can turn it to the off position and you can take the key out now to take the battery out you have to turn it one more click over and that will release the mechanism in the back and then you have a plug on this side that you have to do then the whole hunk of battery <laughs> woo, then it will all come out and this thing is an absolutely monster of a battery here is the label on the battery just in case you want to know that type of information and keep in mind this is a ul 20 849 certified battery so you don't have to worry personally me this would not be a bike that i would like to take the battery on and off because you do have to get it onto this rail nice every single time and the first two times i did it i did not get it aligned up correctly over here so anyways without further ado there's a little gap right here and that has to line up with that and it's a little struggle at first and there you go and then make sure to lock it in place and connect your battery plug and put your seat back on if you do get the 60 amp hour battery they give you an 8 amp charger if you do get the 40 amp hour battery they give you a 5 amp charger now here's something interesting they put on this bike the pedals fold in half plastic front fender plastic rear fender rear brake light that says walkie dual rear suspension back here with the branding of the website you get a lockout up front with a little bit of adjustability preload is on the left side suspension front fork cst bft 20 by 4 inch tire you can air these up to 30 psi the tread pattern is going to be great for the street and a little bit of off-roading dy island four piston hydraulic brakes 203 millimeter rotor nice here's a look at that back rotor and brake caliber standard kickstand in the back that is adjustable with a screw on the other side your controller is in here but i didn't see any label on the controller to see what type of amps that controller is outputting Not Nice wide seat has the walkie logo in the rear you get a bit of suspension from that seat so right now I have the seat on the lowest position it will go just to show you how it is when I sit on it and I'm 5'9 keep in mind another highlight of this bike real quick other than the battery and the dual motor system is gonna be the step through design which is gonna make it easier for older people instead of having to put their leg all the way over or real short people because all you have to do is just put your foot like this and then you can slide right back on the seat. And again, this is on the lowest seating position and my feet are perfectly flat on the ground. But if you are a taller person, you can definitely raise it. And I wanna say that's the minimum right there. And then you can definitely get on this thing and, uh, oh, <laughs> well, if you're tall, 
this will fit you. This don't, this don't fit me this high. Now let's get on to the weight of this bike. Now it holds up to 400 pounds in total. This rear section alone holds up to 110 pounds on the seat that's included with the rear rack that's welded onto the bike. So that's a very nice touch. So if you want to get some groceries, you don't want the seat on here, you could definitely put a basket back here or something like that if you want. But if you do want to hike someone that meets the weight requirement, keep in mind there are no foot pegs back here. So you might have to order those on Amazon, but it's very easy to take the axle nuts off, put the pegs on, put the axle nuts back through. You should be perfectly fine and good to go. Now, one thing that was hard for me to find this information on was the weight of this bike. I was able to find the weight of the non all wheel drive version and the 40 amp hour version, but I couldn't find the weight of this. So I went on some reviews and tell happy TV basically weighed it. And he said this thing is 123 pounds and it just feels heavy. Like it feels really heavy trying to pick this thing up. And it's very, very long to put in perspective. I'll grab one of my other bikes and show you. This might give you a good idea of how long and big this bike is compared to something else on the market that just recently came out. It is a pretty massive bike. So picking it up, moving around is definitely a little bit more difficult than most e-bikes out there. Now here's how the bike looks. If you were to sit on it for the first time, you do have some plastic grips right here. They don't feel too great in the hands, but definitely wear some gloves hydraulic levers right here. You do have a nice fine adjustment, which I love right here. So if you want to get them a little tighter or a little bit farther away from you, just adjust that. Over here is your button layout. You push this to uh, turn the bike on, but if it doesn't turn on like it is right now, make sure the key is on the on position. The bike is now on and it's at 100%. You can see that we are in rear motor only. Now to change that, you don't just tap the I button. Because if you tap the I button, that goes through all your different modes. You can see your miles on it. It's been on for five minutes. I've had one mile on it, max speed 35 miles an hour, average speed 17.8 miles an hour. You have to hold this button. So look at the tires and there we go. Now we're in front wheel drive. And if you hold it one more time, it'll go into dual motor and it has the lightning bolts down there. If you hold it one more time, it will go into a mode where the lightning bolts are gone. So I think this is dual motor, but it's a slower dual motor. We'll have to definitely test this out. And that's pretty much all you really need to do other than you can go up and down in the pedal assist. So if you want it to go faster or slower, and then you hold this to turn your headlight on. Now with that light turned on, we can see how it looks and it's definitely pointed way too low on the ground and the bike is leaning over. So if I lean it straight up, Looks like a really, really good light. So we'll definitely have to do a night video and test this out. The brake light looks very bright as well. It doesn't look that bright when it's not pushed, but as soon as you hit it, dang, that thing lights up everything in my garage back there. My bad, I forgot to show you guys the right-hand side. So here is our shifter. It's a seven speed. Right below that, you do have your horn button, which seems decently loud, especially in a garage where it's echoing. And you do have a half twist throttle and the same type of grip that's on the left-hand side. All right, so that should be everything you guys need to know. And sorry if that took a while. I feel like I've been out in this garage forever, but now we're gonna put the action cam on, take this thing for a spin. We're gonna do a top speed run, a brake test, turning test, all that kind of fun stuff. Let's go and find out if this thing is worth it by the end of this video. That's gonna be a problem. There we go. Man, that kicks in is so far in the back of this bike and it's so long. All right, guys, we are now out here with the action cam on the walkie H7 all wheel drive 60 amp hour battery. Let's go have some fun. Now, one thing I wanna do real quick, and I just wanted to get started with the throttle, is I want to put in mode zero, which I'm in right now, so I'm not getting any electrical assistance whatsoever. So if you were to happen to kill the 40 or 60 amp hour battery that you get on this bike, can you pedal it and would you be fine? And it seems like you would be. Now, I probably wouldn't want to do this for more than two or three miles, but if you're pretty close to the house and had to pedal it for a little bit, it's actually not that bad at all. Now let's move it up to uh, mode one. Let's just use a throttle. And we're in single motor and we're using the rear motor only. We're definitely gonna switch to all wheel drive soon, but I wanna do this test first. And it seems like we're getting about 18 on here, 17 on my phone. Now, if we bump it into two, it looks like we hit about 20 to 21 miles per hour. And if I bump it up to three, it looks like we're gonna probably hit closer to uh, 24 miles an hour all right so that seems about right i'm getting a fluctuation from 24 to 25 miles an hour this is showing about 26 to 27 in mode three if i bump it into mode four let's see how fast we go now i honestly didn't notice that big of a change from three to four 
still only in one single motor. We're only doing now, oh, now 27 miles an hour, okay. I bumped it into five, and we're getting about 31 miles per hour. Not too shabby. So I'm not going to do all those tests all over again using the front motor, but I did switch over to the front motor, and I'm gonna keep it in pedal assist five, because I wanna see if the speed is going to be the same as using the rear motor. It should be, but what I'm noticing right now from the front motor is it feels like it's a tad bit less torquey than the rear. And I'm noticing I'm only getting 23 miles an hour, not 24. It's definitely taking some time. And we definitely have a uh, nasty shake in the front, I've noticed too. It's interesting. I don't know where that's coming from. Can you guys see that? Using the front motor only, that front wheel is vibrating really bad. It went away now. Huh, that's weird, very odd. All right, so we're gonna switch into two motors and see if that solves the issue. Now we're in dual lightning bolts and we're gonna see how it takes off from this light after uh, all this traffic goes. I'm just waiting for this car to go. It's your turn to go, okay. Oh dang, okay. Definitely have the power now, all right. We're in our speed test. I wanna see if this thing will reach 28 miles an hour, if not more. If it's under 28, it's on the slower end of e-bikes. If it's over 28, it's on the faster end of e-bikes. So let's see how this does. One, two, three. Definitely picks up very good. Very, very good. It has like a one second delay and then it feels like it gives you all the power right off the bat. There we go, 30, 31, 32. 33, 34, but on my phone it says 31 miles an hour. Still definitely fast for what this is. Now what I wanna do is I wanna test out what the non-lightning bolts is. I'm assuming it's less power, so let's see. Yeah, okay. So all it is is you're still getting the dual motor out of it, but you're not getting the max power, so it's definitely gonna be more of a battery saving feature. But realistically, if you get the 60 amp hour battery, I don't think you're gonna worry about battery life. So I would probably just keep it in the highest mode possible and go wherever you want. Where do you really need to go that's gonna be over 100 miles that you're really trying to stretch it out? You know what I mean? All right, we can't do our hill test until they move. So maybe if we come back, we can try going up the hill. But man, those guys are blocking the whole area. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, here's some off-road action. Holy moly. All right. Yeah, not the smoothest bike. I mean, it has full suspension, but it's, it's decently rough, to be honest. It's not that comfortable off-road. Oh, oh, there's bugs out here. Ah, yeah, everything I feel is like... Bikes are bumpy in general going off-road, but this feels like more of a like a harsh type of bump. Yeah, suspension can definitely be better. This side's a little bit less bumpy, but still, I'm coming out of my seat. The seat is very comfortable to kind of fall back on, but uh, woo! <laughs> I don't like flying out of my seat every couple seconds when I hit a massive pothole. Got a bug in the eye, hold on. Oh, oh my eye. All right, back to it, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we're gonna go in the street. We're going, we got this. This lady, she's probably like, this guy is crazy, going across the street all fast. Next thing we need to do is the brake test. We gotta get up to 28 miles an hour. I'm gonna go off of my phone what 28 miles an hour is. I'm not gonna go off the display because it's slightly off. There's 28 right there, go. Woo, damn, all right. So the brakes stop really good. Four piston hydraulic brakes. Man, this kickstand is really far in the back of this bike. <laughs> Even when standing off of it, it's crazy. But yeah, so we stopped right there. You can see my tire mark slid all the way over here and braked really good. Look, we stopped right behind this line and the fact that this is a heavy bike to stop and it has 203 millimeter rotors, I think they made the right choice on the brake. So this is a fantastic bike to stop. I had no issues. If I was to do the test again, because I only have like five miles on this bike, I'm pretty sure it'd be better because these brakes haven't really broke in yet, but they're feeling phenomenal so far. All right, so we're gonna be going down a slight incline and we're gonna be at a standstill and I wanna see how fast this bike will reach. Well, let's go. I was gonna try to beat this traffic, but I was very late on the light. <laughs> Here we go. Hauling, man, hauling. No vibration from the front motor right now. 32 miles an hour, 35 on the display. 
I don't like that it's so far off. I wish it was a little bit more closer. I guess you can go in the settings and probably change the wheel or tire diameter speed, but yeah, I'm seeing about 32 max miles per hour out of this bike. Why is everyone in a rush to get around me? Just wait, man, just wait. I'm pretty quick. This bike's not that slow. <laughs> so when that front motor is not vibrating, it actually feels like a pretty good bike. Go car, go, cause I'm hauling ass. Go, you're gonna slow me down. We out of here, wait. <laughs> All right, what I'd like to do right here is the throttle test. And I've been having a little bit of fluctuation on the throttle, so let's see if it does it. So here we go, throttle test one, two, three. Look, do you, did you guys hear that? It took forever for the motor to give it power. It felt like four or five second delay. That is so weird to me. We gotta do that one more time and listen to the audio. I'll bump the audio up in the editing software so you guys can hear it. All right, you guys ready for this? One, two, three. What the heck? What is up with that? Now, do the pedals do the same thing? Here we go, one, two, three. No, the pedals gave me instant power. What the heck? All right, let's do the pedals one more time. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the pedals had a better response than the throttle did. I'd rather have a quicker throttle response than a quicker pedal response. Huh, that's interesting that it's like a four or five second delay. All right, this is why we can't come this way. All right, let's try out this test as they're doing a bunch of construction over here. All right, so this start on the bottom and we're gonna use throttle only. I am in both motors with the lightning bolt right here. And let's see if it makes it up. It should, we got two motors on this bad boy. So here we go, one, two, three. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that front motor is peeling out, yep. Goes up the hill perfectly fine. I'm a car, I'm a car. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Now the one thing that I'm really loving about this bike is the instant torque that you get, especially starting from low end speed because of two motors. Like, look at this, you take off. Now the power does take a while. It actually has a faster response the slower you go. And the faster you go, it has a more delayed response. But this thing hauls ass and gets up to 30 miles an hour quick. God dang, this bus is in a rush. <laughs> We're gonna stay next to you, bus. I'm fast enough, I think. Oh my God, that, that guy in the truck was hauling ass. And the battery bar still says 100%, so I'm not loving that actually. But you can go into the advanced settings and you can change it to voltage. And the V straight of bonus, I think voltage would be the way to go as long as you know your voltage and everything like that. That's what I would do. Check out this torque getting up to speed. Like, check this out with two motors. Like 20 miles an hour, that's pretty quick. Definitely has some real pickup speed. And it feels really comfortable too. You sit upright, the handlebars are very tall. They're not short like some bikes, like a Super 73. Those feel more sporty though. So if you want like more of a sporty look or a sporty feel, you definitely want a bike with different handlebars. You can always change out the handlebars if you want, but these are definitely uh, some really tall ape hanger handlebars. These remind me of the um, Aerial Rider Grizzly handlebars. They're up here. But the way the frame is designed, they're not like way up here where I have my hands like up in the air. It feels pretty comfortable. So I think that's the majority of the stuff that I do on these tests. I really haven't done a turning test yet. I guess that's something we can do. I haven't really noticed any like crazy issues with turning. Oh yeah, this thing goes all the way around until it hits the headlight. So turning radius is great on this bike. No issues with that. Power comes on good. Drips don't feel that great, but the brakes feel great. The micro adjustments feel great and I don't know what this car is doing. All right, park it in the bike lane. I don't think you can park there. We still for sure need to check out the headlight and the tail light, and we'll do that in a totally separate video. We'll also go up another incline, and we won't charge the bike, and we'll just keep riding it until we get close to it dying, but to be real, I don't think we're gonna get anywhere close to this thing dying. I think the closest we're gonna get is probably like 60 or 70%, if that, because it's such a huge battery. We're gonna stay in the max power mode at all times, and we're just gonna leave it. Uh, some other notable mentions of this bike is the fact that uh, the cable management is great. 
I like the fact that it is very long, so if you do want to turn these bars pretty wide, you do have the slack up there. Um, suspension, not great. I already mentioned that. On the road, it feels fine, but if you're riding on like dirt trails, it's like the absolute worst. All right, guys, welcome to the end of the video. You guys are the true MVPs if you guys watch the video all the way through. But if you just skip to the end and wanted to see my final conclusion, then hey, that's fine too, because that's why you guys are here, right? To see if this bike is worth it or not. And I'm not gonna say this bike is worth it because I feel like this one in particular, I feel like it got damaged in shipment too much. Like we couldn't do the pedal test and that's on me because a company wanted to send me the parts, but it was also gonna push the video review probably like a couple weeks back and I wanted to get it out as soon as possible because I have other things coming in and we gotta like rotate this stuff out pretty quick. So the pedals I'm pretty sure is fine. The shifter, the Shimano, everything's like all the other e-bikes. That shouldn't be a problem. The only thing I didn't really get the test out for you was when you feel ghost pedaling so I, I'm sorry about that and I'm not gonna charge this battery because I want to see what the actual range will be and funny enough when I got to the house it was saying 91 on the display and now it's saying 100% because as, as I was like setting up the camera and stuff like that, I turned it, had to turn it back on because it turned off. I think it automatically turns off after like three or five minutes. And now it's at 100%. So I don't like that. So I might switch it to voltage on our second video when we ride it at night and test out all these lights and stuff like that. But my phone on here is saying that we did 11 miles. Max speed was 32 miles an hour. We couldn't get any more than that. I really wish this thing would hit like 35 miles an hour. That'd be pretty cool. But I think it would have to be 52 volt for it to go like over 35. And at that point, it might even hit like 37. But anyways, yeah, we were out there for about 40 minutes. My average speed was 19 miles an hour and it felt fine. Like the torque is great on this bike, but the huge delay in the throttle, I don't know what's going on with that. It gets worse. The faster you go, there's a huge delay. I don't know what's going on with that. And I don't even know if you could change that in the advanced settings. I'm not even sure. If you notice in the back, it's dual springs, but there's no adjustments on here. So you can't adjust anything on there to kind of make it softer. So that's kind of a downside. The front felt very stiff as well, but it is made for someone that's 400 pounds and I'm 165 pounds. So just take it with a grain of salt. If you're like 300 pounds, the suspension actually might feel better for you but lighter riders especially lighter than me under like 150 pounds this bike is gonna feel very bouncy because you're not gonna be compressing the suspension enough and it's just gonna feel like you're just hitting rocks and bumps everywhere you go and it's not gonna feel comfortable even though the seat is great um, and it has suspension under here I just felt like the bike overall was uh, too rough for my liking I don't know I think it's a cool bike it's definitely worth the money as long as yours doesn't come damaged in shipment if it does the company will obviously take care of you they were gonna send me that part but it's just gonna take too long to uh, shoot the video review so sorry I couldn't do the pedaling stuff again I'll see you guys in the next one you guys are the true MVPs of this channel and thanks for watching everything will be down in the description and yeah see you guys until we get another bike what's up man <laughs> what's up yeah, yeah, it's all electric. I don't even have to pedal. <laughs>